Hello and welcome to the Mr. 50mm YouTube channel. I'm Mr. 50mm, but you can also call me Chris. This is the first video of this channel. Hooray! A bit of background. Now, I'm not a photographer by trade. I'm more of an enthusiast, or maybe an insane person. You can decide that one. Now, where am I going with this? Right. So recently I came back into the hobby of photography. I came back hard. I bought new camera gear, started taking my camera everywhere, snapping photos where I could, and f started finding places to explore again to take more photos. Uh, however, more importantly, my other hobby is collided with photography. And on a related side note, I definitely suffer from gas. I also suffer from a uh, gear acquisition syndrome. On top of that, I've also been really fascinated recently by the uh, concept of a view camera. These are the big things on rails with a high degree of movement, uh, such as this one uh, here uh, at BNH. However, I'm also afflicted by another problem, being a cheap bastardo. I know there are a lot of uh, used view cameras out there and they're not all that expensive, but I also recently had a bunch of material lying around uh, and I realized I'm actually pretty okay at the 3D printing thing. So I applied some of the uh, materials and some of the big brains uh, to turn the ideas into an actual view camera. So today's actual video is going to be about uh, what happens when you combine uh, 3D printing and photography together. First of all, I also wanted to state that uh, a 3D printed view camera is a not an original idea by myself, uh, yours truly, Mr. 50mm. Uh, there have been plenty of previously designed and freely downloadable files uh, to print uh, your own view camera. Some of these have been wholly 3D printed and other, other of them uh, use 3D printed parts where required. The uh, camera that I made was inspired heavily by the following uh, printable uh, camera. I'll put a link below and put the camera up on screen now. I will however point out that I did wholly design mine with a very specific purpose in mind. There are a lot of 4x5 large format cameras to download and there are plenty of medium format cameras to uh, download as well, such as this one. However, there are no medium format view cameras that I could find, and I know what you're thinking. Why not just print one of those 4x5 cameras and then just buy or make a medium format adapter? It's less work. Heck, here's an adapter I found on eBay. And to that I say, be quiet you, that's why. Although, for real, uh, I didn't use those designs because I wanted specifically to try my hand at designing the camera uh, by myself. I also wanted to tailor the design towards the parts I currently had at home. Uh, for example, the uh, camera I recently, or I just put up on screen, the uh, Vega, uses aluminum extrusion for the main sliding mechanism. I did not have that extrusion on hand, uh, and I didn't want to buy it, being a uh, sufferer from being a cheap bastardo after all. Uh, I did, however, have several 8mm polished steel rods from a previous 3D printing project and plenty of linear bearings to go with it. Uh, so I wanted to make the project to use those. I also wanted a more fine focusing method than what the Vega offered, uh, and I did that by using 8mm threaded rod and a nut as a focusing rail, kind of like the other cam uh, view camera that I had. So I'd been inspired by, you know, couple cameras along the, this route. Uh, and finally, I really didn't want to build a 4x5 uh, camera. I really wanted it to be a smaller 6x9 centimeter format. Uh, so I chose uh, to really kind of base the camera that I built around the uh, Graflex 2.3 uh, slash 6x9 platform. And uh, the reason for that is I didn't intend to shoot 4x5 film. I don't even really intend to shoot film in general. Uh, my intent is actually to use a old medium format uh, digital back and uh, put it on the on the camera. Uh, specifically, I'm planning to use the Leaf Aptus 22. Uh, and I'm, yes, I am aware that the digital back format is way smaller than 6x9. In fact, it's smaller than 645. Uh, however, with the digital back, I know I'm not gonna get all the coverage that I could get that the lens I have uh, could provide. However, I can still enjoy playing with the movements of the uh, view camera uh, while enjoying it on a format that is bigger than 35 millimeter and uh, more convenient than film. 
Uh, and really that's the main thing. I wanted to, to get a camera that I could easily play with the perspective. Uh, additionally, you know, using a digital back means I can shoot, review, and modify the uh, framing as I see fit, kind of on the fly. It's still not very fast, uh, seeing as the view camera still takes a while to set up, but you know, it's faster and it's still uh, kind of, I think is pretty, uh, it's a pretty, pretty good experience to, to have. So with all that, what did I actually make? Now, isn't that something? You get your full range of motion there. Let's, let's see if I can demonstrate. There's your tilts uh, in one axis. Tilt and shift in another. And again, the other axis also does the shifting. And in the back, you can also tilt and shift the film plane or sensor plane in this case. And you can see it, this design itself is pretty inspired by that uh, Vega using the one-sided arm. Uh, that, now that for me was personally due, due to just saving plastic and being a bit cheap. Uh, again, cheap Bastardo syndrome. But there it is, a view camera of the medium farm variety with all the tilts and movements and focusing uh, adjustments that you could hope to have. Okay, so when I was designing this thing, I noticed that the, uh, that camera bellows are not cheap. These things. So in order to uh, find one, I looked within my own collection for a sacrifice. Now, I have plenty of Polaroid PLOA cameras, the uh, Land series cameras. And I thought, well, that film, that's about 85 millimeters by 108 millimeters or three and a quarter by four and a quarter inches. So bigger than six by nine, smaller than four by five. So I thought that'll do for my purposes. So I took one of these land cameras over here and basically removed the bellows. Well, just fully disassembled it to get the bellows out and uh, use it on, uh, on this project. Now, I figured that's fine since these land cameras are literally everywhere and can be had for like no money. This one, as you can see by the tag on there, or maybe not, but oh, there you go, was seven Canadian dollar dues, uh, or like five US cents, I don't know. So, you know, pretty easy choice of uh, either take the bellows off one of these that cost me $7 or spend a lot of not $7 on a brand new bellows that I don't have currently. Easy choice, I butchered the Polaroid very instantly. Now, I also forgot to mention that the uh, lens mounting system is also built based off the Graflex 2.3 uh, lens mount. So I just basically copied the uh, lens plate there onto the uh, front end of, the, of my actual camera and used the same style to mount the Graflex lenses on. So if you have a, uh, if, or so if I have ad additional Graflex lenses, I can just pop them off those and then put them directly onto the camera without any modifications. The lens I selected to put on here though was a Yashica 127mm f4.5. Now the version that I have is very janky. Uh, the low speeds, uh, they, they fire sometimes, and are intermittent at best. Uh, I also had to uh, take apart the lens and remove a bunch of the coatings that were already on there due to uh, a lot of fungus having decided that that was a great snack. Uh, so the contrast is lacking on the lens, but it works. Uh, I should also mention that this camera, it's very big. It measures in at about uh, 18, centimeters across this way, about 25 centimeters from top to bottom, which is the uh, 
Arca Swiss uh, mounting uh, standard there. And its length is a fairly girthy 40 centimeters. Uh, the weight is also not super light. Uh, with the ground glass, it weighs in at around uh, 1.95 kilograms or roughly 4.3 pounds. With my uh, Leaf Digital back though, that weight balloons up to uh, 2.6 kilos or roughly 5.7 pounds. Uh, so that is very kind of unwieldy. But that's all right, since these are mainly going to be on tripods anyways. So, you know, not a uh, normal steel. Uh, when you're using these, you expect to be carrying around a lot of stuff. So, uh, it's all right. Now with that in mind, let's get to actually taking some photos. All right, let's see what this camera can do. First off, I do want to apologize. The day that it went out, it was really windy. So there's a lot of wind noise. I tried to use some uh, noise reduction and reduce the levels, but we're gonna get quite a bit of that on top of the audio. Anyways, we're gonna be doing this from start to finish. So you can see I've already set up the tripod and I've now gone back to the car to go grab the actual camera. All right, like I said, the camera is equipped with a Arca Swiss uh, tripod plate. So I screw it in and go back to the car to grab more photo gear. With everything set up, I wind the shutter and try to open the iris. It takes a couple tries. The lens is pretty janky. Now it's actually time to frame up the shot and focus it. I apologize that the image isn't very clear on the video, but rest assured, I can see it just fine. So we'll proceed. All right, now that we're all framed up and focused up, I will pop the uh, ground glass out, put the Aptus digital back on, and then wait for it to power up. It takes about 10 seconds for this one to actually boot. Then the next step is to connect the sync cable from the Aptus to the actual lens, and we are ready to shoot. And there it is, a picture. So let's try that again, this time with some tilty action. First I'll pop the digital back out, put the ground glass back on, and again, try to fiddle with the lens to get the iris to open up, and play with the uh, tilting functions. Til there we go, second time good. And here's the photo. Not too bad, aside from the lack of contrast. And for the last photo, I figure let's do a selfie. I'm using a weird mechanical self timer here, uh, so it's gonna make a bit of noise. You know what? When the lens is actually stopped down though, it surprises me. It still delivers pretty good detail and uh, even without the contrast, I think that's a pretty solid photo. All in all, this was a pretty fun project. And hopefully it was a fun video for you guys to watch. Now, if you're interested in 3D printing or making your own view camera, I would actually recommend the Vega that I mentioned earlier, especially if you're gonna do it from scratch and buy the parts that are required to build one of these things. It has a really complete set of instructions and it seems overall like a pretty good build. And if you have a medium format back, you can actually print a four x five adapter for it. Uh, I may actually cover how I built mine in another video. I know it's not a four x five one, but uh, conceptually, uh, same idea. It's, uh, it's not as easy as I thought, but it wasn't a super difficult project. Uh, on top of that, if there's actually any demand for the uh, camera that I designed, uh, at some point, maybe I'll release the files and draft up an explainer for how to build it, as well as how to tear down the Polaroid that you need to do it. Uh, that being said, I did, however, like build mine with the specific goal in mind of using parts that I already had. So 
it's not really a great option if you don't have the parts that I do. But, you know, if you want to go and buy them and you don't mind breaking a Polaroid, let me know. Leave a comment below. Uh, thanks for listening to my ramblings. Uh, don't forget, uh, until next time, happy shooting and uh, like, comment, and subscribe. Bye.